this setup is definitely overpowered. What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today's video is all about making beats from scratch using the combination of the Roland MC-101 and the Innovation Circuit Tracks. In this case, I'm kind of using the Circuit Tracks as the main device, like it's the brain of the setup, it's supplying all the tracks, and it's also acting as the mixer. The MC-101 is kind of acting as a sound module for the Zencore synthesis engine, as well as its handling of samples and turning them into kind of synths as well. Obviously, this thing has a staggering amount of features that are going to go underutilized in this video, but this is a combination that people have been wanting to see and that I've been wanting to experiment with. So without any further rambling, let's jump into the devices. Let me quickly walk you through how this is set up. Super easy. I thought this was going to be a pain, not even close. So go to shift setup and I'm going to go to MIDI one that is sent to MIDI channel one and that controls both the first drum track and the first synth track, which is a little odd. That's why I have this turned down here. MIDI two is sent to MIDI channel three and that's controlling synth three. The discrepancy between one and three is a little odd. Uh, that took like just five minutes of trial and error. Let me just demonstrate that working. I've got a sample loaded in to this track right here. This is a bass growl I designed in Serum as a tone track. And then this one right here is just the initialized tone. I haven't set it to anything yet. And then these are just my initialized synth presets, drums, all doing stuff as normal. And then the other thing to note is that because I've got two synth engines that I'm triggering built into here, I uh, can actually do this stereo. To achieve that, I've got stereo outs running in here. And then in the mixer, I can pan both of these. So here's the weird thing. MIDI one and two have like two separate things going on. They have the MIDI data that's controlling this stuff. And then they have the audio data that's being brought in via inputs one and two. So if I pan these left and right, this will basically turn these two mono inputs into one stereo input. And that's just a mono sound. So you get the idea that works. So that's how you set that up. It's a little bit odd, but fairly straightforward to actually do. So let's just make some stuff. I don't really have much of an agenda other than uh, make a bunch of beats and take advantage of this thing's sound engine, the way it deals with samples much better than the tracks does, side chain stuff, which the MC-101 can't do. So grab your matcha or your caffeinated beverage of choice. Let's make some beats. I was thinking of doing something like kind of res inspired, like mid tempo, because I've been digging that style of music lately. And while I'm thinking about it, let me go to sidechain, send MIDI one heavily. Also, uh, real quick, I should mention, we now have velocity into this, which is nice. It's got the capacity for it, just these keys aren't set up for it. If you're using an external MIDI controller, that just works. I want to put the portamento on, turn it, well, down. <laughs> it defaults it to really high. Keep it a little extreme. Trick the ear into thinking that this isn't a sample would be neat. And then I want that release to go up. <laughs> That's so cool. So if we're going for kind of a res type vibe here, it's got to be more, um, a little more laid back, a little more sinister. And also while I'm thinking about it, this note is F, so I should change the key offset. And then I can actually go to scales, change the key of that so everything will play nicely together. The one thing I should make sure I do is uh, do a pitch offset with this because right now this note is F. I'm gonna course tune, send that down five semitones because it's hitting F, so now it'll hit C. I kind of like how that's uh, warping it a bit. So let me send this up just a tad maybe to uh, put this in the key of d and let's come up with a part let's do that maybe 
Maybe this will make a little more sense with some more drums. That could be really good. This needs some grooving hi-hats. And then let's shape this kick a little bit. I like that. That's neat. That will work for now. Uh, I think with some more layering, it'll make a little more sense. Okay, that could be really dope. <laughs> That's so sick. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's got this little sinister groove to it that I uh, was really hoping to get. about shaping this a bit. I'm almost wondering if that's a bit much in terms of that bass line. Let me strip it back to its bare essentials. So we are going to do this. We're going to leave this guy alive. He gets to live. And we're going to do this. Little, little twist there at the end. I'm actually wondering if this kick needs to change. That's cool. That's cool. Let's uh, get another mini track going. Oh, and I sent that one to the reverb too. Okay, so I made a silly mistake that I'm now going to correct. I gotta make sure that I don't mess with these to mess with the volume of these synths. I gotta mess with this separately. Like this is an overpowered setup, but it's a it's a little finicky because messing with these volumes will mess with the stereo image. If I wanted mono samples, I wouldn't have to deal with that, but you gotta have that beautiful stereo width in your bases. And I gotta remember that these act independently. You also get the side chain. There we go. I'm a dumbass. Not my proudest moment. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's find a preset. So in this case, I actually do want to get like a built-in preset. Oh, you know what we should do? We should take advantage of the random because it's fun. It's a bit much. Ooh. An octave down? Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, let's go. And we've still got a whole other synth track left, and I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. Because this mix, this drop is dense. I could almost do something like purely percussive with this. Oh yeah, and we have a whole other drum track as well. Let's just do that. Okay. 
Okay, so here's a little trick. I'm going to do a dedicated, like, advanced circuit tracks tips in a bit, but here's a little trick. Uh, if you want to do step automation uh, for pitch and you want to, like, really dial it in, go to velocity. Then you can just keep hitting the button. And uh, you can do that. Chain these four together, save this. And then while I'm at it, I need to remember to actually write this project because if I don't, then these will no longer be able to talk to each other if I want to revisit them. So I'm gonna call this tracks one. Because you can hold more projects in a pack now, I just paged down and this is tracks one, the project. And so now I can recall this, pull this up, and it'll be like guaranteed to work together right off the bat. I spent a little more time off camera just fine tuning a few elements and then figuring out an arrangement. So here is how I would build up an entire drop. All right, let's go for another one. This time around, I want to go for something a little more spacey. Take advantage of the Zen Core's uh, kind of vintagey sounds. Let's go right to pads. Just take the first one we find because it's really good. Oh, you know what we could do? Okay, this is going to be cool. Let's get an 808 going on in here. Okay, so this one is the one I want to use. And uh, I'll probably end up side chaining that to the kick. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit much. Maybe it's too uh, choiry for my taste. That could work. We're going all dark all the time. Okay, so that lasts long enough. And then this one, I want to last two bars. So I'm going to go to pattern settings, make that half speed. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a bunch of hi-hats going here. Engage the side chain. I like where this is headed. liking where this is going. We've still got two more tracks. I think we're going to need them, but let me deal with a little bit of percussion. Let's do some hi-hat ratchets and such. So that goes right there. Micro steps. So I want this to go twice, slightly different each time. What's a little like a little percussive bit I can play here? right in that pocket. So then do a variation on that. Let me change the sound. Then we can do some pan automation. This is cool. And we still got two more synth tracks, remember. Let's fill those up next. There we go, let's do that. Yeah. 
one more thing going here. Something I can put up really high, I think. I ended up changing that main lead patch after the fact. I didn't really like the amount of hiss going on in that preset and it wasn't really fitting in the mix for me. And I managed to find something that not only fit better in the mix, but took better advantage of kind of the inherent strengths of the circuit's sound engine. Plus it just sounds more like space. So here is kind of a fuller version of that beat with that new patch. <laughs> session of using these in combination. If you'd like to see them in competition, instead, you can click or tap up over here for a full comparison between the two devices. And if you'd like to see more Novation Circuit Tracks beat making, this time with the Microfreak, you can click or tap down over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.